Hey guys, Tony here. Back to do a recent vinyl editions video. Um, nothing too crazy, just some stuff I found. Local shops, um, that's about it. I haven't been buying online too much again. Like, I'm like, just trying to reduce the amount that I buy, and not buying online certainly helps. Um, but yeah, just some stuff I found around. I went to a store I've never been to before in. It's sort of a well-known store in my area, uh, Brass City Records. Uh, it's been there forever, and it was actually the first time I went there. And um, I actually got to a conversation with the owner, who was a um, big Frank Zappa, Captain Beefheart fan. And um, so as a result, I really didn't have as much time to search through everything, but I found a few good things. And, you know, it's, it's a decent store, really, and uh, I need to go back. Um, check out their website. Uh, they, they're known for having a lot of crazy shows there. Um, some like really cool artists have played there. One summer, I think in the 90s, they had almost every member of Gong and Caravan play within a month, uh, but separately. It was really interesting. Brass City Records in Wallingford, Connecticut. Um, the website isn't anything special, and you can't really, I don't think you could really buy anything from there, but it's still. Just check out the list of shows that have been there in the past. It's an interesting little, interesting store, and uh, definitely got to go back. So, it's been a crazy week for me. Um, I've actually had less time to spend with listening to vinyl than I usually do. And I think this week is probably going to be even worse, at least for a few days with work. Uh, it being month end, which always sucks. So, as a result, I, you know... There's not a whole lot, again, I'm not going to be able to say about these, maybe even less. So that might be a good thing. I don't know, I know some people like the longer videos, some people don't. But, um, yeah, I, you know, I kind of look into the records I buy a little bit, just to have maybe something to talk about, but I didn't really get to do that this time, so. But anyway, I'm just going to show you what I got. Um, this one is a local band for me, and uh, I showed their debut album, probably over the summer, um, and I didn't know this, but Sequoia Flame had also discovered this band, and um, yeah, they're a local band, I've never seen them play live around here or anything, but I love their, their debut record, and um, Snake Oil, um, I forget, months ago I showed their debut, like when it came out, I picked it up, uh, but they put out a, a new EP, 7 inch, uh, two tracks, they're very, um, kind of neo-psychedelic just good rock band really um, touches of psych kraut rock in a way I highly recommend checking them out uh, I recommended them too when I showed their their debut LP um, but yeah check them out Snake Oil based out of Connecticut really cool band so pick this up thank you to Sequoia Flame I had no idea they even put this out so um, they had it at my local store so I grabbed it um, so, right, so some jazz here. This one's an interesting find, and um, I'm really glad I picked it up because it's fantastic. Uh, much better than I even thought it would be. Uh, it's called, if any of you guys know this record, um, have it, let me know. Uh, it would just be cool to, to know if somebody else has this. Uh, it's called the East New York Ensemble de Music, and it's called At the Helm. And it's sort of a, a world music record in a way, crossed with jazz. They take a lot of different influences, um, a lot of Eastern influences, Turkish, uh, Indian, Chinese, a lot of Eastern things, India. Um, and they sort of cross it with jazz. And it's a, the result is really cool. The one instrument, uh, I don't even know if I want to try and pronounce these two names, but they're headed up by two guys who are very... Um, learned musicians and, and studied all over the world. Um, Christ. Ahim Naraldin and Bilal Abdurhaman. Uh, I'm sorry. Those two names. Oh, God. These two names here. You can see. Um, yeah. Very, very cool record, though. Um, just awesome stuff. They play... Uh, a Korean reed, which is a very inter in interesting instrument, um, but yeah, awesome stuff. They do a cover of, uh, I believe it's called Little Sunflower 
by uh, Freddie Hubbard on this. They just call it Sunflower. And uh, it's such, this is a really cool record. And it's on uh, Folkways. So it's on like the Smithsonian Folkways Records label. So uh, yeah, very cool stuff. This one I actually picked up today. And uh, I knew nothing about it, but saw the names on the, on the cover of who plays on this and saw the cover itself. And I'm like, God, there's no way this can't be good. And it's fantastic. Uh, Larry Corell, Corelli, sorry. Coriel, if that's not you. Larry Coriel on guitar. John McLaughlin on guitar. Chick Corea. Billy Cobham, just a fantastic. Spaces. So, yeah, this is a, a Larry Coriel uh, record. Look at that cover. Fantastic jazz guitar fusion um, from I think late 60s. This is going back a little ways. Uh, it's on Vanguard. I want to say, oh, this is 1974. I thought I read something that it was early 60s. Uh, but okay, 1974. And um, this is fantastic. Fantastic playing just serious virtuoso guitar. Um, really well done and enjoyed the hell out of this I, again I bought it today I listened to it once and loved it so and it is on the uh, Vanguard label so I'm very happy to get this for seven bucks very cool uh, this one a number of people in the community have showed this before and I've been on the lookout for it for a while and last week I was at a local record store and um, just kind of looking through and there were other customers in there I saw a guy go up to the counter with this and pay for it. I was like, damn. But then I went to that other store, Brass City Records, and they had it. Uh, Eberhard Weber. And this is Colors of Chloe. What a beautiful record this is. Just fantastic jazz. Um, Eberhard Weber, is, I believe, is the bass player. Yeah, he plays bass and cello. Um, but this is just, what a record. Just beautiful stuff. It's very... It's like dreamy in a way. A um, little bit of damage here on the cover, but it was only like five bucks. And the record itself is in beautiful shape uh, on ECM. Yeah, just beautiful, beautiful. So, very happy to get this. And just enjoyed the hell out of it. I believe uh, I first seen Derek show this. Big Star 1000. Very cool record, I'll cover too, it's just interesting. ECM, you just can't go wrong. <laughs> this one has got to be the greatest album cover ever. All right, David Nixopi, he, uh, he showed a record by this artist and uh, he commented on um, the fact that he had a picture of himself uh, without a shirt on. And this guy is definitely a hairy bastard. So David kind of questioned his judgment of having this photograph on the back cover. Um, well, David, check this out. <laughs> this is actually, um, I guess I'm just a spud boy. Took this photograph and, and photoshopped his face and his head on. <laughs> and that's his little, uh, I'm sure you guys have seen it. It's brilliant. But yeah, Herbie Man, Push Push. Yeah, this man, look at this cover. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but I gotta tell you, this record is fantastic. It's unbelievably good. Um, awesome stuff. Herbie Man is a flute player, obviously. Um, he's also a sexy bastard. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> um... It's a fantastic record. Dwayne Allman plays on this. Uh, they do, here's the, this is an original. It has the die cut cover. Uh, push, push. The inside photo is very um, risque as well. But um, yeah, he does a cover of, um, sorry. Push, push, the title track is phenomenal, first of all. He does a cover of what's going on. Uh, Marvin Gaye, of course. Spirit in the Dark. Um, it's just a funky, soulful, fantastic record. 
and he has a note down here that says, oh, it is on, sorry, uh, Embryo Records, which is his label. Um, I guess a sub-label of um, Cotillion. What a cool label, huh? Embryo. In beautiful shape. Like, unplayed, really, for five bucks. I just couldn't pass it up. Uh, and, yeah, fantastic record. Um, and he makes a note in here. This is from 1971. He makes a note and says, uh, P.S. Marvin Gaye's album, What's Going On, is the best album of the year. And um, I saw that. I'm like, you know, God damn it. I still don't, I don't have Marvin Gaye's What's Going On. I've seen reissues go for like 20 bucks, more than 20 bucks. Um, but I was lucky enough to finally pick up an original. At least I'm pretty sure it's an original. Of what's going on, of course, a classic must have record, just awesome in beautiful shape for 18 bucks. So, can't complain. So glad to finally have it. It is on the Tamala label. What, what can be said? I mean, just a must have in beautiful shape, too. Okay, so moving on. Um, this one, it's a reissue, but what a great album. Uh, Archie Shep, Magic of the Juju, if I'm saying that right. Fantastic cover, too. I want to say this is from 1967. Um, yeah, not sure. I think it's probably right around there. Um, on ABC Impulse, or just Impulse Records. Um, unbelievable. Especially that, the title track. Uh, it's the whole first side, and talk about just amazing stuff. I forget exactly how many percussionists he had, quite a few, um, maybe like six different percussionists on The Magic of the Juju, um, all playing, and while well, Archie Shep is playing this free jazz like craziness over it, and it's just, it's what a track. Um, just very sort of, you know, free jazzy, very Afrocentric, just excellent stuff. Check it out if you see this around. It's a 2011 reissue. Love it. Uh, a couple of uh, Hubert Law's records. Uh, this one I really liked. Afro Classic on CTI. Let me take it. Just really beautiful stuff. I can't fault either one of these records. I'm just wondering how much I'll actually listen to them. I don't know. This one I really liked. I think I just gotta listen to them more. Ah, uh, here's the cover. Yeah, on CTI. In really nice shape, the binding. The, you know, has this, um... Um... And on, on CTI. And yeah, he does a cover of uh, James Taylor's which, which one is Fire and Rain, but a fantastic, you know, flute player, really. He plays a few different instruments, I believe. And yeah, enjoyed this one. This one is just kind of, again, I can't fault it. It's a beautiful record, but I don't know how much I listen to it. It's very sort of smooth sort of stuff. It's very beautiful. This is Morning Star, also on CTI. I, mean, I just gotta listen to them a little bit more. So they weren't. They were only a few bucks. So very happy to get them, but you know. All right. So this one I've been meaning to check out for a while. Finally did. What a crazy record this is. It's just very very weird. Um, Mike Hurley and the Unholy Modal Rounders. So he's playing with the Holy Modal Rounders on here. Um, have Moisey. Um. This is a reissue on Light in the Attic Records. Um, very sort of zany folk album. Um, just weird Americana stuff. And uh, I really enjoyed it, to be honest with you. I'm really glad I picked it up. It's just really, it's down home folk, you know. Um, Mike Hurley's very well known, obviously, for, for that style of music. And I believe he draws the covers as well for his album. Um, but yeah, really enjoyed it. This is um, 1975. Um, 
It's called New The New Weird Americana. That's what it's called. And um, it's called the greatest been called the greatest folk album of the rock era by the Village Voice. So happy to get it. Very, very interesting stuff. Finally got a copy. This is one that's, you know, really should be in every collection. Um, just the standard sort of thing. But it's also the kind of thing where it's like, I always passed on and bought something else. I have the CD of this. I've had it for years. Very familiar with this record. Johnny Cash, Live at San Quentin. Um, finally, you know, got just a beautiful, clean copy of it. So, not much to be said here. Just a classic record. This one is very interesting, and again, enjoyed the hell out of it. Uh, a member of, um, what's that band? Comets on Fire. Uh, a side pro, I forget the musician's name, but this is his side project. I know I've seen people show this, uh, Six Organs of Mittens. Um, very experimental, folky, indie rock, um, with a lot of Eastern influence. Uh, really enjoyed this. They have a lot of different albums. And um, this is, it is on uh, Drag City. Oh, sorry, this, it's called The Sun Awakens. As you can see, it, you know, sort of has that Eastern sort of motif. You know. Really good. Glad to get it. This one, I know I've seen somebody show before. It might have been Dan in Canada a long time ago. I'm not quite sure, but again, I saw this at the store and uh, grabbed it. <laughs> Talk about names, having trouble pronounced because I'm terrible at it. O2 Quitzocota. So, this is an interesting record. Uh, originally an independent, um, privately pressed record, you know. Um, very, very loner folk. It's by Dave Bixby. And Dave Bixby was a, just sort of a musician, unknown. Um, who basically was around in the 60s playing in bands and, and also playing solo at folk clubs and uh, got involved in the drug scene, took a lot of acid, and after his experiences with drugs, said, you know, really left him feeling empty and, you know, just experiencing that sort of after LSD sort of feeling. And he said his, you know, his experience with drugs really sort of left him feeling empty. And basically, that opened him up for a Christian awakening, and um, and that's basically what this album is about. A very, very loner again folk, but it's also excellent. Um, recorded, I mean, you know, sort of just recorded at home, sort of thing. Um, but it's very sort of morose sounding record. Very well done, I think. Um, again, just fantastic loner folk. Very are references to religion in it but it's not so much a Christian album or anything like that I would more say it's more about feeling very alone uh, and searching for something to fill that void in your life sort of thing um, but yeah very interesting record reissue obviously private presses of this is like, or, sorry reissue or originals of this are impossible you won't find it you know but a very, very cool record. Dave Bixby. Uh, so while at the local record store yesterday, I actually ran into Cool Ranch Dressing, River and Shelly. They were at the store. Um, and just happened to see them. And I was talking to them, and I asked River, you know, I see anything cool, and he recommended this. Um, a band I've, I've heard a little bit by, and sort of knew what they were about, but never really went further than that. And he recommended this to me. Uh, a newer band, Fucked Up. I'm sure many of you have heard of Fucked Up. Uh, the Chemistry of Common Life. I gotta say, the vocals, of course, this is a punk rock record, really. The vocals are very, very aggressive. Um, you know, sort of scream vocals in a way. Um, but the music is fantastic. It's very, very well done. And I'm really glad to get this. So, I definitely got to thank River um, for recommending this to me. I got to listen to it more. I just got it yesterday. But just loved what I heard. Um, Crooked Head. Awesome. Um, Son of the Father. 
Uh, I'm trying to think of what else. But yeah, Matador Records. So, very happy to get this. And um, very cool to see you guys, for sure. We definitely got to get together again uh, and do some record shopping. So, very cool. So, thanks again. A um, few more here. Focus. Moving Waves. Sort of a progressive, heavy progressive band up, but out of Germany, I think. Oh, you see their records a lot. This is a UK pressing. Uh, beautiful shape. Hocus Pocus, I believe, was like kind of their hit. But uh, that second side, the eruption side, is also it's a long, long sort of, I don't want to say sweet, but um, it's just a very cool record. Loved it. So very happy to get this. Got to listen to it some more, but enjoyed the hell out of this, too. Um, another sort of a folk record, really, Karen Dalton, 1966. So this is like recently unearthed recordings of her sort of rehearsing. Uh, Karen Dalton was notorious. I think she, she was kind of like had stage fright and she didn't perform very much. Um, but yeah, 60s folk singer. She put out a couple records. I do have to check out her solo records or just her regular records. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed this. Again, just done on a reel to reel in her living room. They just happened to record her rehearsing. And uh, Reason to Believe by Tim Harden. She does, it opens with that. And uh, really well done. Just really awesome. Just listening to this at night and sat on my couch and listened and fell in love with it. Very folky, of course. Uh, a lot of traditional stuff, but also a bunch of Tim Harden and uh, Fred Neal covers. And uh, very cool stuff. So recommend it. And finally, no, is this finally? No. Almost. Um, this is one that uh, Fred, Big Star 1000, showed. And I told him, like, this is at my local record store. It's been there forever. I said, um, I think I'm going to grab it. You know, he definitely recommended it. National Health. So, phenomenal record. Um, I get Canterbury Prague. I showed Hatfield in the North. Hatfield in the North basically turned into Na uh, National Health. Dave Stewart. Um, and a few other people from that scene, <clears throat> the Canterbury Prague scene, are in this band and uh, fantastic. Again, very jazzy, um, progressive rock, jazzy fusion y sort of stuff, and very well done. So happy to get this, and it was really cheap, a few bucks. So thank you, Fred. And finally, finally picked up a copy of King Crimson Islands. And uh, this is, I think, the only earlier Crimson record I still needed. And uh, I really need to start delving into their later stuff. Um, the After, Lark's Tongues, Red. Um, after that period, i got to dig into their later period. Don't know it at all, and I know it, a lot of it's really highly recommended. But yeah, Islands. This is the U.S. cover. I believe the uh, U.K. cover is just like sort of a space scene. But... Um, Still very, very cool to finally find this at a local store, too. Um, excellent. And this is the, the album that came out before Lark's Tongue. So, uh, very happy to get it. Excellent stuff. So, that's what I got. Again, sorry I didn't really describe it very much. Uh, a lot of it I still have to become more acquainted with. and But I'm sure I'll end up talking about a lot of this stuff again at some point. So, I'll leave you some comments, guys. Let me know what you think. And take care.